In today's After Effects tutorial, I'm going to be showing you something fantastic. I've been in the lab the past week figuring out how to do this effect from the Fantastic Four First Steps trailer. I'm going to show you how to distort the air just like Sue Storm. How to make your own custom rainbow lens flares that you can then add into the air distortion. How to accomplish the flickering chromatic aberration on her logo and around her body. As well as the echoing effect that's just shooting out of her hair, her face. This is not only a great replication of the Sue Storm and visibility superpower, but also every single one of these tricks is a must know to be an incredible visual effects artist. I have to let you know that this incredible tutorial is sponsored by my sugar daddy, Squarespace. So the first effect in this whole ensemble I'm gonna show you is how to create her body echoing outside of herself. So what we need to do, of course, is come up to the Rotobrush tool, click on her character, and we just need to mask our character all the way through. Once you have a beautiful mask of your Sue Storm, we'll just come over here and click on Freeze to lock our mask in. Now we have a clean outline of our character. I'm just gonna duplicate this clip and I'm going to delete the Rotobrush tool on the bottom layer. And I'll rename this first one to Sue Mask. Ask. So now we're gonna go to effects and presets and we're gonna type in echo. We're gonna grab echo and put that on top of our mask. And I'm just gonna solo our mask for now. And the important features we're gonna do is we're gonna change echo operator from add to maximum. We're gonna set our decay to 35 number of echoes to three. And now here is the magic part. If we hold down the alt button and click on echo, we're gonna type in wiggle parentheses five comma point four. Just kidding, instead of point four, we'll do point three. So when we watch this back, watch what's gonna happen. So now you can see every single frame, it kind of echoes forward and backwards in time, creating this constant shake of our body shooting out around ourself. You'll thank me later for this, but since we've created an expression on here, if we right click on echo time, go to keyframe assistant and just convert expression to keyframes. Long story short, this will save you a bunch of render time. So for now, just so we can focus on the next effect, we're going to disable the Sue mask. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the flickering chromatic aberration that you see as she's using her superpower. Like if we zoom in on her logo here, you can see it's flickering uh, blue and red all over the place. So I'm gonna duplicate our footage right here and I'm just going to name it RGB1. So this is how you do chromatic aberration manually in After Effects. In Effects and Presets, if we go to Shift, we'll find an effect right here called Shift Channels. And I'm gonna put that on RGB1. And right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set green to full off. And we're also gonna set blue to full off. So we just have the red. And now we're going to duplicate that in RGB2, and now what we're gonna do is take green from, we're gonna set that uh, to green, and then for red, we're gonna set that to full off. And now this is super important. This green layer, we're now gonna set to screen. So this first layer here is normal, but the second layer is screen. Now we're gonna duplicate that layer a third time, and we're gonna full off green, and then take blue from, we're just going to set blue. And look, now our footage is back to normal color. So now here's the magic part. Watch what happens if I take RGB one, and I move the position around. We get this incredible RGB split. If you move the position of any one of these channels, it actually actually gives you a different look. So if you do the one where it's just blue, it'll be blue and yellow. If for the one where it's just green, it'll be purple and green. And then the bottom one, it'll be your classic red and blue aberration, which is the one we're gonna focus on. So we're gonna take RGB1, the one that creates uh, blue and red aberration. We're gonna hold down the Alt button while we click on position. We're gonna do wiggle. We'll do six comma 22. I know that's really specific, but I thought that looked great. So now if we watch this back, you can see the crazy flick green chromatic aberration. It's beautiful. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these three RGB layers, right click and pre-compose them, and I'm just gonna name this aberration. And just while we're at it, this one layer with our echo effect on it, I'm just going to name this echo mask. We're gonna bring the echo mask underneath of aberration. And so what we're gonna do to fine tune this aberration, so we're gonna grab the pin tool and we're just going to make a mask around our character's body. Because the effect kind of distorts the face a lot, I'm going to exclude my face from the mask and I'm just going to feather this effect up a lot. So this is what the effect actually looks like after we've pre-composed and masked it. Now with the echo effect and the chromatic aberration, this is the absolutely sick look that we get. This is just like in the movie trailers when she herself is flickering. I hope you guys are as stoked as I am about how cool this looks. So now I'm gonna talk about how to do the air distortion. You see obviously in the video, she's creating these invisible 
ability waves that like warp the reality around her. So what we're gonna do is come up to layer, new and solid. And we're just gonna create what I'm gonna call waves. In effects and presets, we're gonna grab an effect called radio waves. So we'll grab radio waves and put that onto our waves layer. We have this layer that's just generating blue circles. So what I'm gonna do is right here in the effect control, as you see producer point, I'm just gonna put this basically right where my face is, right here. Right here under the stroke, we're gonna change this to white and under profile, we're gonna change it to bell. Now this is the fun part. We're gonna under wave motion, we're gonna crank up the expansion. So it goes basically throughout our entire scene like this. So when you scrub through the timeline, this is what the effect looks like. We're gonna change the frequency to three. So the waves are constantly shooting out like this. And back down here under stroke, the start width, we're just gonna crank that up so our waves are big, just like this. So just to give a quick explainer, we're eventually gonna use these radio waves as a source layer for displacement map. You can see what that's gonna look like here. And a big important thing is right here, is not to have these waves cover up our face or else the displacement map is gonna make our face look like this, which we don't want. So to get rid of that with radio waves right here under fade in time, we're gonna crank that up until that first one is basically invisible. We don't want this effect to mess up our face too much. So we're just gonna crank fade in time, I'd say around one. That looks really good. And then under lifespan, we're just going to make this over time be more of a subtle effect. So I'm gonna crank my lifespan to three. So right now, this is what this effect looks like. And quick side note, let's say instead of shooting straight on, you're shooting these waves sideways, like here in this clip. The way you're gonna do that is you're gonna take the velocity and just crank that to be in the direction that you want. So velocity is what's gonna make this go left or right. So you can crank velocity up to like 2000, and now the radio waves are gonna shoot sideways like this. Now just a pro tip, radio waves slowly starts by default and there's no way around this. So, and by the time I raise my hands, I want the radio waves to be shooting out as fast as possible. So right here, when my hands are raised, I'm actually just gonna grab the waves clip and drag it to the left. So it's already shooting a bunch of waves by the time I raise my hand. And then of course, I'll just drag the end of my radio waves clip all the way to the right. So now for the magic, we are going to go to layer, new and adjustment layer. Under effects and presets, we're gonna type in displacement and we're gonna grab a displacement map and put it on top of our adjustment layer. And what we're gonna do under the displacement map layer is we're gonna choose waves. And under the source, we're gonna do effects and masks. So now I'm going to make the waves layer invisible. And now you can see the subtle lines that are affecting our scene. To make this pop a little more on our displacement map, we'll crank up the max horizontal displacement to like 65. And now if we watch that back, you can see what's happening here. Now we have this beautiful air distortion that's not really affecting our face. The simple way I've been doing this is by the time I raise my hands, I'm gonna create a keyframe for opacity at 100, and as my hands lower, I'll just turn it to zero. So bam, as soon as I raise my hands, the displacement map keyframes from zero to 100, just like this. And now we have so many beautiful things going on now. We have the echo that's flickering around my head. We have the chromatic aberration on my body and logo, and now the air is distorting. And if you want all of these effects to kind of pop up at the same time, we'll grab our aberration and echo mask layers. I'll create a, a keyframe for opacity. I'll bring it to the same time we reach the adjustment layer to 100, and then we'll just start it at zero. Throughout the time I raise my hands, all the effects come on at once. So I have no effects on my body, and then over the span of like a few frames, the echo comes on and chromatic aberration. So we have like a boom. Oh, and I should mention that this displacement map layer will mess up the edges of your video. You can see here that the there is a bit of an alpha channel sneaking in to the edges of your video because the displacement map is actually displacing your video so much that it's distorting the bounds of your video. So an easy fix for this is in effects and presets. If you type in Repetile, you can put Repetile on your original clip. And let's look, you can see these two, um, you can see the edges right here messed up. If you set it to unfold and expand right, it just fixes that right up. This effect is just extending the edges of your original video. So when it displaces, the edges of your video, it's not affecting the bounds. And now for the coolest part of the Seuss Storm effect, which is the rainbow lens 
flares that are constantly shooting throughout the superpower. So to create a custom rainbow flare, we're going to come to this button here and create a new composition. We're gonna come up to the shape tool and I'm gonna grab the polygon tool and I'm just gonna make a small pentagon. In effects and presets, I'm gonna type in gradient and we're gonna find the effect that's called four color gradient right here. And we're gonna drag that onto our polygon and just to start over here in our effect controls, we're just gonna change all of these colors to the color of the rainbow, which is gonna be red, yellow, green, and then blue. And just, we're going to grab the colors and just drag them to the inside of this polygon like this. So we have this beautiful looking shape with the rainbow colors. We're gonna come up to layer, new, and adjustment layer. And in effects and presets, we're gonna type in radial and we're gonna find CC radial blur. And we're gonna put that on our adjustment layer. We're gonna switch the type to straight zoom and then crank up the amount. We, by the way, we do not want this effect in this pre-comp to go past the edges like this here. So we're actually going to scale the shape down like this. If you grab the center, you can see you can move this around to kind of create this custom Lindsay flare look. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hold Alt and click on the center of this radial blur. And I'm gonna type in wiggle 10 100. And now if we watch that back, our rainbow lens flare is kind of jittering and shaking all over the place. I'll even crank up the amount even more. This looks amazing. You know what, I'm gonna be a little bold and maybe even change it to 150. Mm, that looks absolutely beautiful. So let's reveal this composition in the project and I'm gonna name this to Rainbow Flare 1. So now if we go back to our original composition, let's bring in Rainbow Flare 1 into our scene. And we're gonna set this to add. And I'm just going to put this somewhere cool. Maybe right here, maybe I'll scale it down and put it, I'll put it underneath of my adjustment layer too that's warping the air. You know, this looks great, but I actually think the lens flare is moving too much. So I'll go back into rainbow flare composition and change the movement to five, 150. Maybe, maybe even five, 100. That looks beautiful. So if we go back to our original comp, you can see now we have this wiggling rainbow sun flare. And what I'm gonna do to make this come in with our image is I'm gonna do the same thing with opacity. I'm gonna create a keyframe for 100% opacity and just slowly fade it in as the effect comes on. So this is what it's gonna look like. Ah, oh, this is absolutely, this is beautiful. Now this is the fun part. We can keep duplicating these rainbow flare comps and creating custom rainbow flare looks. And now I'll make one that's kind of like a crescent moon shape like this. Scale it down to fit to comp. And then of course, we're gonna readjust our four color gradient so we can see all of our colors of our flare in this. So with this one, I'll stretch the center out kind of over here. Now look how cool this lens flare looks. This one actually looks so incredible. This looks like a real ass lens flare, guys, wow. So I'll go back to our original project and I'll grab this rainbow flare and drop it into the scene. I'll set it to add. Maybe I'll put this one right here. Oh wow, that looks incredible. And just like the first rainbow flare, I will hit T for opacity and I'll create two keyframes, fading it in as my superpowers come onto the screen like this. And if you ever want these to move, more. If you hit S to bring up the scale on this rainbow flare, you can hold down Alt and click on scale and type in wiggle 10 comma five. So it'll just wiggle more. Check it out guys, I'm basically Sue Storm here. Wow. And this is endlessly customizable because you're not animating the position of these lens flares. You can just constantly move them around or scale them up and down to see where you want these lens flares to be. You can always duplicate the lens flares that you make and scatter them throughout the project or make more lens flares. I'll set this one I just duplicated to screen so it's maybe a little more subtle. I'll duplicate this one here and maybe I'll rotate it so it's like above my head like this. I'll scale it down so it's not so atrocious. You can just rinse and repeat of copying and pasting all these different flares to create a custom, cool, vibey look. And I think this just looks absolutely incredible. And now you can see we've got our rainbow flares, our chromatic aberration, our echo of our head constantly shooting out from our body. I mean, this is the Sue Storm effect from the Fantastic Four First Steps trailer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do the Invisible Woman superpowers from the new Fantastic Four movie. Smash that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this tutorial. Tutorial. This is kind of a complicated effect, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will respond to everybody with a question. Follow me on Instagram where I post my own cool superhero stuff there as well. And it's time to thank my incredible sponsor.
sponsor who I hope you check out, Squarespace. I have to introduce to you Squarespace's design intelligence. You might not know this about me, but I have the biggest collection of vintage life magazines in the world. And I wanna create a site showing off this American history in a really pretty way. And so with Squarespace's design intelligence, I can create a website that looks perfect and vibey. So with these vintage magazines, maybe some cool vintage looking shapes to show off some covers a nice color scheme that really matches the dark tones of these magazines. And if I need some assistance, they have award-winning templates. So I actually have a lot of duplicates of these vintage magazines and I wanna sell them as collector's items to other people. And what's amazing about that is Squarespace has online stores you can create. So if you have products, whether that's jewelry, plants, vintage magazines, you can create a beautiful online store with Squarespace. And even better, Squarespace Payments is endless. They have all the popular payment methods like Klarna and Afterpay, all the buy now, pay later options. And if you don't think Squarespace is incredible yet, well how about the fact that they gave me a code to give you for 10% off your first website or domain. So go get a discount on creating a website that will bolster your image as a professional. Really anybody can benefit from having an amazing website. So build it with Squarespace. Where there's a will, there's a way. My name is Will and have a nice day.